The creature we're talking about today, scientists believe is the most abundant of all creatures. Some have said four out of every five creatures on Earth is one of these. And this is what we're gonna be discussing today. Nematodes. Let's get to it. Now, if you remember our last video, we talked about the first of three worm phylums, Platyhelminthes. And this week, we're starting on the second phylum, Nematoda. Now, organisms within this phylum are, are normally called nematodes or roundworms. So, how abundant are these animals on the earth? Well, one study reported more than 90,000 nematodes existed in one rotting apple. Now, this apple isn't rotting, so there's not as many in this. Another reported 236 species exist within just a pile of mud. In fact, nematodes are so abundant that they have adapted to every single ecosystem we have on this planet. This includes salt water, fresh water, soils, from the polar regions to the tropics, as well as the highest to the lowest of elevations. Now, Nathan Augustus Cobb, a nematologist, someone that specialized in nematoda, working for the U.S. Department of Agriculture, famously put it this way in 1915. He said that if everything on the earth suddenly disappeared, except for nematodes, we would still be able to see the shadows of our planet. We would still be able to see little bits of the streets or even bits of the mountains and the forest because nematodes are so abundant, we could still see the outlines of the shadow of what remained. There are about 20,000 known and described species of nematodes, but scientists estimate there could be as many as 500,000 species if we included those that have not yet been found or described. So just like the flatworms, some of these roundworms are free living. And while others are parasites, nematodes are very small, slender worms, and on average five to 100 micrometers. Now the size of a micrometer is one millionth of a meter thick, and 0.1 to 2.5 millimeters long. The smallest nematodes are microscopic. Free living species can reach as much as two inches in length and some parasitic species can reach over three feet in length. FYI for your information. The largest known species of nematodes is Placentonema gigantissima, which can reach around 30 feet long in the placentas of its own sperm So what exactly is a nematode? And what does it look like? Well, here's some of the physical features of a nematode. First, nematodes are bilaterally symmetrical. We talked about that last time as well. They have long, round, cylindrical, and unsegmented bodies that are often tapered on both ends. And they're covered in something called cuticle, which is a strong, flexible, non-cellular layer composed of protein. And the body is often ornamented with, with ridges and rings and bristles or other special structures. And they possess a really simple digestive system. And sometimes it even includes things like teeth or a stylet, which is a kind of a hard, sharp structure that can be used to pierce prey or suck liquids from plants or animals. Nematodes also have a simple nervous system, which several nerves that run the length of the entire body and a circular nerve around the pharynx, which serves as the brain. Now, the bodies of nematodes are also covered in numerous other sensory bristles that provide a sense of touch for it. And behind the sensory bristles on the head lie two small pits. Now, scientists think, they, they think these are probably some type of chemical reception organ, or an organ which senses the chemicals and converts it into some type of signal. Kind of like if you smelled something stinky, it makes you want to plug your nose. 
but a few aquatic nematodes possess also what appear to be eye spots. But it's unclear whether or not these are actually able to sense light. So scientists are still working on that one. So where do you find nematodes? And how do they interact with the environment? Well, as mentioned before, some nematodes are free-living and some are parasites. The free-living nematodes can be found in terrestrial or aquatic environments and feed on anything from algae, fungi, and fecal matter to small organisms, <laughs> dead organisms, and living tissues. Many free-living nematodes play critical ecological roles as decomposers and predators on microorganisms. But nematodes also include parasitic species, which can infest many different animal or plant hosts. Some of these parasites affect humans directly or indirectly through their domestic animals or crops. Plant parasites include several groups that can cause severe crop losses, but there are also some very beneficial nematodes. As mentioned briefly earlier, nematodes play an important role in the decomposition of organic material. They feed on things such as bacteria and fungi, which accelerates the return of nutrients found in these organisms back to the soil where they are then accessible to plants. Also, some parasitic species of nematodes infect and kill insects, pests that have soil-dwelling larvae or pupa, which makes them an excellent source of natural pest control. It's even possible to buy live nematodes that target specific pests to place in the soil where they're needed. So nematode are vast in number because their important purpose is the breakdown and decomposition of so many things and they live and thrive on so many things. So it's no wonder that four out of every five possible creatures could be a nematode. Well, that's pretty amazing to think about it or gross if you think about it too much. But still, it's awesome anyways. So I hope you enjoyed today's video and look forward to sharing with you some more in the future. Let's get to it. So we really have a lot of great information coming this way. And if you're interested in this topic or any of our other videos, please click subscribe and the bell so you can be notified as videos are coming out. And feel free to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. And let's get to it. We'll